Christina Taylor Green was only with us for nine years, but she touched lives, and that little girl's story is going to touch yours. We spoke with Christina Taylor's mother, Roxana Green, and New York Times bestselling author Jerry Jenkins. They've written As Good As She Imagined, the redeeming story of the Angel of Tucson. They say it's to share the hope that even a short life such as Christina Taylor's can bring. Roxana, tell us what the book is about. My story is about my wonderful daughter who was born on 9-11, and we had nine wonderful years together as a family. Unfortunately, she passed away on January 8th when she went to go meet Gabrielle Giffords with my neighbor, and basically my book and my story is about the nine wonderful years that we shared together as a family. And Jerry, what did you think as you learned about Christina Taylor that made you decide to help Roxana write the book? When I became aware of this book project, it literally was just a few months after it had happened. And uh, we got together by phone and talked, and I was struck by how interested the Greens were in honoring their daughter and telling the story of hope that came from this horrible thing and realizing that I'm you know, here I'm talking to the mother of a child that, that's been killed just literally 12, 14 weeks before. As I studied this and researched it, realized that this really was an unusually special girl. It wasn't just because it's, she was born on 911 and happened to, to die in a tragedy. She just immersed herself in everything she was interested in. If she was drawing, if she was singing, if she was dancing and playing baseball, she wanted to be a big leaguer, first woman big leaguer. She thought she might want to be president of the United States. When you ask the question about why would a nine-year-old be interested in going to Congress on your corner, I mean, I can't imagine that, but once you get to know Christina Taylor, you realize she immerses herself in this, and if she had an interest, she just dived into it completely, regardless of the fact that she was nine years old. So, Roxana, let's go back to January 7th, if you will, the day before the shooting. You say you were doing what you've done so many times before, just making plans for the kids. Friday afternoon, our neighbor, Susie Heidelman, had called and invited the kids Dallas and Christina Taylor to go meet Gabrielle Giffords at the Safeway for a meet and greet, Congress on your corner. And Dallas said, oh, I can't go. I just got my next belt in karate. We now go to classes on Saturdays. And then the next morning, you get up. How did that go? Well, it was a beautiful day, and um, we were going about our typical family business on Saturday. My husband had said that he was going to go over to a small rental property we had just acquired. I uh, was going to take my son to his karate lesson, and Christina was going to be picked up by our neighbor, Susie Hottleman, at 9.45. So that's how our day started, and those were our plans. So Christina Taylor was so excited, and you say she had her favorite outfit on. What was that? She had on a pair of dark blue jeans, and she had on like a peach pink T-shirt that had the Caribbean or an islandy kind of tropical theme, and it said, wish you were here. And that was her favorite shirt. Oh. And she had brand new tennis shoes on, and they were blinged out, you know, they had... They were colorful. They were a girly girl with a little things glued on. And then she had a little hoodie. I said that it might be cold because it's January. I know it's Arizona, but it's still kind of chilly in the morning here. And I just insisted that she run back in and get the little jacket. And then I had a peace sign on the back, and it was tie-dye. And then I guess she didn't want to wear it, and she left it in Mrs. Heidelman's car. So my neighbor, who lives next to Mrs. Heidelman, brought it to me few days later. And that was the only things I ever got back of her clothing was the hoodie because she left it in the car and uh, her sapphire earrings. I got the earrings back later from the FBI. was thrilled to have them back because that was a very special thing to get her ears pierced. She waited many, many years for her ninth birthday. She was allowed to get her ears pierced. So in the book, you say you didn't know about the shooting, right? You just found out that something bad had happened to Christina Taylor or to your friend Susie, who she was with, right? Bill Heideman, Susie's husband, um, called me, and uh, he said that uh, he just got a call from UMC, University Medical Center, and uh, the person calling had said that we needed to get down there right away. 
And I said, oh, why? Was there a car accident? And he says, I don't know. They didn't give any details. And I said, I'll meet you there right away. I'll meet you in the ER. And uh, then I called my husband immediately, of course, to tell him, and he didn't answer. Probably with one of the contractors at the house had left his phone, you know, at the counter. Mm. Then I called him again and again. And then we just took off. We just, I grabbed my son. I said, come on, Dallas, grab a jacket. And then he kept on looking at me, and he was confused. So I just said, it's okay. We're just going to pray. We're just going to pray that everything's going to be okay, that they're both okay. And then what happened when you got to the hospital and you found out that Christina Taylor had been shot? I was in disbelief and denial, possibly, because I just kept on thinking they were just going to come out and ask for permission, maybe sign some papers, you know, to do a surgery or something like that. The thing that really struck me in the story was that Roxana herself is a nurse, has been a nurse. And so when she talked to the woman in that ER and she told her who she was and she was checking on Christina Taylor, she said the woman told her to wait here a minute. And she said, as a nurse, I didn't want to hear wait a minute. I wanted to hear just a second. So she was getting the picture. Mm. Of course, that's not what I wanted to hear. When the surgeon actually came in and told her, John wasn't quite there yet, and John had to come and get that news. And then they spent the time actually in a room with uh, with Christina, you know, before they, they left the hospital. It was uh, just a heart-wrenching story. I tried to wait for John as long as I could, but I couldn't wait anymore because seconds and minutes seemed like days. So um, I asked that I really need to be told because I couldn't wait any longer. And the surgeon came in, and he was very, very upset. And uh, he told me that Christina had passed away. She was shot in the chest, and she had died. And uh, that was just the worst thing that ever happened to me my whole life. And shortly after that, my husband came in, and then uh, he asked us if we wanted to go see Christina. And uh, the three of us went to spend time with her, and she just looked like a beautiful angel. She had this sheet up to her right underneath her chin and then her, over her feet, all the way down over her feet. And we just prayed and stayed there a long time. And we just told her how much we loved her and we we're so sorry that she would be with Grandma and my grandmother. It, it was really, really hard. And then all the rest of us in America got to see another very emotional moment shortly after that. It was during the president's speech. And tell us how that inspired you to go ahead and write Christina Taylor's story and title it As Good As She Imagined. Well, I think one of President Obama's best speeches was when, probably the best one he ever had, was when he came to Tucson. And my husband and I and my family were not able to attend because it was the Wednesday after she passed away. Yeah, and he was so inspiring and in honoring the people who had helped those who'd been shot and wounded and everything. And and then he said, basically in, in the speech, he said, I want America to be as good as she imagined it, because he was talking about her and Christina Taylor's hopes for the future. And that just jumped out at everybody. So you titled the book, As Good As She Imagined, The Redeeming Story of the Angel of Tucson, Christina Taylor Green. Roxana, if Christina Taylor were still here, how do you think she'd feel about the book? And then what's happened since then? A lot of times I think she still is with me. She's come to me in my dreams, and I think she would be very, very proud that Jerry Jenkins wrote her story. Oh, my gosh, I know that she's come to me in a dream, and she was just thrilled, and she was smiling, and my mother was smiling, and we were just so honored. So I think that she would be really proud um, of the present speech, and... I know she's really proud of the Christina Taylor Green Memorial Foundation and all the great things that we've done so far in her honor. And I think she'd be proud of me for making sure that her legacy endures forever because she had a lot of dreams and we had a lot of plans together. People find that hard to believe because she was only nine years old, but we had already discussed where she would go to college, um, you know, her, her sweet 16 or 21st birthday what she was going to do in high school. She wanted to be a student council president. So we had a lot of plans and ideas, and we were very, very close. 
very, very close to each other. So we have discussed things in great detail. Now you mentioned, now you said she came to you. Will you tell us about that incident? Right after, maybe a month after she had passed away. It was a very, very special, magical night. And uh, she came to me. It seemed like it was so real. And uh, it was a bright, bright light and just her beautiful face and smiling. And she said, Mommy, I'm happy. I'm with Grandma. I'm really happy. Don't worry about me anymore. Don't be sad anymore. Don't cry anymore because I'm in a good place. I'm very happy. Just ever since that day, just made me feel better. I obviously always believed in heaven, but I just was like confirmation. In as good as she imagined, you mentioned that when Christina Taylor was born on 9-11, while the rest of us were reeling from the terror attacks, you still see that date differently. It will still be one of the best days of my life, that and my son's birth and my wedding day. So I'm always going to think of it as a positive time. It doesn't really matter what day she was born. We always looked at it as a day of hope and change. And we were really proud of our country, especially Christina was, of how everyone came together. It was actually kind of funny with Christina Taylor before she was at about age six or seven because obviously she didn't understand what 911 was all about. And when she had her birthday, she would have red, white, and blue on the cake. And everybody was around the television at that time because they would do these retrospectives on 911. And she just thought the whole country is celebrating her birthday. Well, when she got old enough to realize that it was a tragedy, it kind of sobered her. And my evaluation of it, of course, Roxana would know best, it seemed like she was honored to be part of that deal. I mean, there was a book that came out. What was the name of the book? Uh, Faces of Hope. Faces of Hope. It was about one child from every state in the Union that was born on 911, and they actually had a page in there about Christina Taylor and her interests and that type of thing. Mm-hmm. So overall, Roxana, Jerry, what do you want people to get from, as good as she imagined, the redeeming story of the Angel of Tucson, Christina Taylor Green? Well, I hope it gives them uh, hope. I hope that they continue to have faith if they're having a hard time, if they've lost a spouse, a sibling, a child, or just lost their job or, or, you know, having bad times, that it gets better. There's always hope. It is a sad story, but it's also a positive story because you can get through terrible, traumatic things, and there could be good at the end. If they can survive that, she was literally here one moment and gone the next, and it, and it wasn't easy. I mean, to make it sound like, well, isn't it great that we can have this thing in her honor? There were some dark nights of the soul, and you can just imagine the terrible pain of losing a child in, in seconds and how you hear about that and suffer through that. But if they can turn that into hope and say, God is with us, we can move on from this, it will never be the same, and we'll never stop mourning for Christina Taylor. But she had a, an image of what America could be, and she wanted people to have hope. And so I think, it, as Roxana says, it's, it's a tough story, but it's also a feel-good story, because in the end, that, that's our worldview as, as believers. There's hope in the end. We're not going to be defeated by this horrible event that happened. As good as she imagined, the redeeming story of the Angel of Tucson, Christina Taylor Green, by her mother, Roxana Green, and New York Times best-selling author Jerry Jenkins. It's available from Worthy Publishing.